ocean. Wow. And even though I was living in a shack, mm -hmm. like I was literally living in, I was renting one room from a dude and there was a little ass hole of a window, like a half a window for ventilation. And I had a giant fan on it trying to get some air in. It wasn't happening. And so it was, it was bad. It was rough. You know what I mean? I, I'm, I'm like, yo, I'm thinking about it because it's like I've been wanting to like just bounce and go somewhere. Like I know Puerto Rico, that shit must be lovely though. Like to be living there, like it, it's like you feel you back home, you back to the motherland. You know, yeah. it's like. <laughs> nah, but or sure. I mean, even when the the lights was out, I was mm -hmm. looking around. I'm like, bro, the lights are out, but like this place is beautiful, bro. Like yeah. even when the lights out, this place is beautiful. Like it doesn't even matter. You know, yeah. you get lost and you're in paradise. Like, everywhere is a paradise. Mm -hmm. You know, the island's really small, so you're never more than, like, 20 minutes away from a beach. You mm -hmm. know, even if you're in the dead center of the island, you're still only 30 minutes away from the beach either way that you go. You know? Yeah. So, like... And yeah. how is it now? How how How's everything now, like, over there? Like, how's the... You know, with the lights, with the infrastructure, How how is it? Definitely. So, I, I get that question a lot, man. Um... I'm I'm happy to report that you know it's been over a year now and everything is back to normal, bro. Everything's back to normal. Tourism is picking up, a lot of people coming in, and it was almost like a blessing in disguise. And I don't want to discount any heartache, misery, trauma, people's lives were lost. Like it was it was an atrocity. But mm -hmm. at the end of the day, every failure then becomes a new beginning. Mm -hmm. So now the island's going through a renaissance. People are starting new businesses here. There's there's a section called Cale Luisa. That's where I lived when I first moved here. And dude, it's popping. There's all these restaurants and bars and lounges, all new businesses. Like if you went through there a year ago, even when I moved here, if you went through there, it was like a couple of restaurants, but a lot of abandoned buildings. Mm. And bro, in the past year that I lived here, all new restaurants, bro, they opened the Irish pub in Puerto Rico. There's an Irish pub. There's a Korean barbecue spot. Like the whole neighborhood is re is regentrifying mm -hmm. and revitalized. And everybody, basically, what Hurricane Maria did is it, it sh shined the light on Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. Puerto Rico was fucked up before the hurricane. The yeah, economy yeah, yeah. was fucked up. The jobs were fucked up. There's a the whole country's in debt. There was a lot of messed up things in Puerto Rico. And so while the hurricane was horrible, and again, my condolences to anyone who lost their lives, the 4,000 people that lost their lives, I don't want to discount that. Um, we were still blessed with publicity. And now that publicity is bringing new business, bringing new industry. There's actually a tax incentive. If you move down here, you uh, can pay 0% capital gains. So that means if you own your own business uh, or if you do stocks and, and you do trading, or even if you're a freelancer and you get paid on a 1099, people don't know you mm -hmm. are owning your own business. If you own your own business, there's a way to pay 0% taxes by moving down here from the States. Now, you have to apply for it. There's a process like everything. Um, but there's a way to do that. And so then and that that's been around since 2012. It's been an incentive to stimulate the economy. And it's called Act 20, Act 22. And so th there's tons of people that are now moving down here. A lot of these people are my friends millionaires and billionaires that are now moving down here and creating new lives and creating new ecosystems down here. So I'm very positive for the, the future of Puerto Rico. If we want to talk about the infrastructure, so we still have the oldest energy grid in the United States. And this was the biggest blackout ever in United States history. It was mm -hmm. like really, really bad. So I don't want to discount it. Um, but as far as the energy grid, right now we're at 99.9%. .9 and the only reason that 0.9% there may be one or two towns on the main island and then the island of, um, not Culebra. Culebra might um, also have uh, problems. Um, but basically, there's little islands that are next to us that yeah, are yeah, yeah. part of Puerto Rico. And a lot of those are still on backup generators. You know, okay. so they have power, but they don't have power. They're burning diesel constantly to keep those islands alive. And and like I said, in the island itself, there might be one or two small towns like inside the, the hills, like in the mountains and stuff that mm -hmm. still have outages. But we're at 99.9. .9. You go everywhere. Everything's open for business. There's Walmart. There's Costco. There's movie theaters. Like it's is back to normal. If you're looking to vacation or even if you're looking to move down here, shoot mm -hmm. me a DM. 
uh let me know reach out to me i'll be more than happy to to show you around it's a beautiful place to live no that's hot man i mean i might take you on that offer to go for like a weekend and be like yo i'm gone for the week you know uh, i'll be back ma you know <laughs> <laughs> you come through bro yo i so i live right now i live in a three bedroom three three bathroom uh penthouse it's freaking gorgeous i got two guest bedrooms so anybody that like yourself anybody that comes through i always uh, have the ability to host them and uh yeah i got a pool tennis course i'm living a beautiful life and for what you were paying new york it's like mm -hmm. you would get like a one bedroom apartment mm -hmm. and i'm out here living living good you know what yeah, i mean no, so no, I, i'm i'm super blessed man I, I, i'm super happy to be out here and then like i said the nice thing about it is it's almost part of the united states i tell people it's mm -hmm. like going to florida it's a yeah. three hour plane ride you don't need a passport to come and is United States currency and your phone doesn't go on roaming. So you come down here and it's just like going to Florida, except you are in a tropical, beautiful place in the Caribbean. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So you have these amazing beaches. You have these beaches that you go and like they're so secluded and you feel like you're in the Bahamas somewhere, you know, but then you also do have a city. The roads are paved very well and you still have some of that American infrastructure. Um, so it's, it's definitely a beautiful place, man. And, and like I said, I would love to have you come down here. We actually got an event coming up on October 25th. So I would love for you to come down here and, and speak at the event. And yeah, come definitely. You. I'll definitely swim by. I'll, I'll go down there, man. I might even, I don't even know. Because I right now I'm thinking about going to Florida, but you just told me you don't need a passport over there. I might go and spend June down there. So yeah. right now I'm in the middle of like um, planning this whole trip to either Florida. I mean, I have everything already set for Florida, but I'm nice. thinking like, yo, you know what? Maybe I could spend July in Puerto Rico, you know, spend June in Florida, July in Puerto Rico, come back in August. <laughs> like, yo, we back. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And that's a beautiful thing. Cause right now you live in that laptop lifestyle. So you have the yeah. freedom to do what you want, live life on your own terms. You yeah. know what I mean? And that's the one thing that I really realized Um, when I first moved down here, I was a block away from the beach. So I would wake up in the morning and I would go in the ocean and I would watch the sunrise from the ocean. Wow. And even though I was living in a shack, mm -hmm. like I was literally living in, I was renting one room from a dude and there was a little ass hole of a window, like a half a window for ventilation. And I had a giant fan on it trying to get some air in. It wasn't happening. And so it was, it was bad. It was rough. You know what I mean? But I was blessed. I could walk to the beach every morning, bro. And I'm like, yo, why am I living this life in New York city? Like, why am I dealing with pollution? Why am I paying on a high rent for no reason? What? Like, why, why, why is everybody not down here? You know what I mean? Why is the rent so cheap? The rent should be more because everybody should be down here, but we're so stuck in that rat race, that mentality of nine to five, nine to five, nine to five. You know, and the fucked up thing is with AI and automation, bro, if you're not coding, you're going to be out of a job, bro. Accountants, mm -hmm. your job is over. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. QuickBooks is way too smart. QuickBooks could do the whole taxes. You don't need nobody. Mm -hmm. Like the only person that you're going to need an accountant, the high level. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Donald Trump needs an accountant. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, freaking uh, Bill Gates needs an accountant. Man, regular people don't need no accountants. Yeah, no, you just come in, put in the numbers. Uh, how much the you numbers there's a little app. The app talks to you. Oh, hi, my name is Mr. QuickBooks. Yeah. And the fucking app does everything for you. And it's the same thing. All these jobs are getting replaced. Tesla just came out with a car that drives this, uh, uh, not a car, a truck. A truck, yeah. A freaking tractor trailer. You know how many jobs that is? You know how many of my friends? That That's the majority of the job? United States. That's the 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 most, the, the position that has the most jobs out there for people working right now. I was like looking into that because like I told you, I was doing this advertising where I'm actually talking about all of that. Like I, I go into uh, showing people like, hey, if you're in this industry, you're pretty much, you need to start thinking about changing careers and learning something that's going to be for the future. You know, you don't want to be that guy in, in 1886 uh, walking around with a horse when the car just got invented. You know what I mean? So it's like, you know what's coming. That car is about to replace every freaking uh, cart horse that you have out here. It's like, you got to be smart. You got to start buying yourself some cars. You know, it's the same thing for people. You see, the jobs are, are not going to be there. So start learning things that's going to help you get those jobs and 
the future positions and you know i think coding it just opens doors and and even at that like there's people that learn how to code and get get into marketing get into design get into uh a whole bunch of different fields that's connected to the tech industry but if you don't know how to get into the tech industry or how to get like an introduction in there you're gonna be the guy out here you know like walking around with a tiki torch you know <laughs> mad because there ain't no jobs the coal mining is not coming back the fucking you know the guy complaining like hey man my grandfather had a job my gr my dad had a job i don't have a job start studying some shit that fucking is gonna give you a job you know there's people that's doing like psychology and dumb shit like that but don't want to be a psychologist so it's like you're taking a degree that's not gonna get you anywhere you know what i mean it's like there's a lot of people that do that and go even to college and don't study things that the long term makes sense you know so but that's why i think it's so important what you do you know what i mean because you're giving people education for a job that is going to be there in 20 years and like i said uh like we were talking about earlier like like you're doing it in your authentic voice so people mm -hmm. are going to relate to you that they couldn't relate to other people that are teaching bro so please keep teaching, keep doing what you're doing, because I know you're probably having a bigger impact than you even realize on people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that, that's one of the reasons why I continue to do this is like there's days that uh, I'm like, man, I'm so tired. I'm like, whatever. I want to hang out with my kids and stuff. But I, at the end of the day, I'm like, yo, you know what? I'm I'm doing something for a purpose. You know, like there's people that's going to come here and going to see this, you know, a year, two years from now. Uh, five years from now, I'm be like, man, Joe, I got this job because of you. I, I'm able to provide for my family. You know, like the other day, somebody sent me an email that that touched my heart because I know how that person feels. This guy sent me an email. He's like, yo, Joe, this is the car I just got to buy. Thank you so much. I got hired. I got my first car and this, this and that. And I was like, man, I know why that kid feels like that because I was in the same position. I was like, yo, I... I was going to be on the bus, the Q39, hopping on the M train, you know, doing transfer to the L train, to hop on the Ford train, to go uptown. Like, I was that guy. So for you to be able to be more comfortable and, and we don't have to be millionaires and rich, right? If that those things come, that's a blessing. But being able to live like a regular human being, be able to have uh, the things that's going to make your life more comfortable, that's the blessing that you really want to get to. You know what I mean? So if you get a good job that provides everything that you need, you're going to be good. You know, I was watching this documentary where they, they were talking about in Africa, if you live in a village and you have a cell phone, you have more opportunities than everybody else in that whole village because they don't have a cell phone. Now, if you have a bicycle, you have more opportunity than everybody in the whole town. There's guys that's working the whole year just to buy one bike of $200. That's how bad people have it over there, right? Where it's like, just by having that bicycle, it gets you from point A to point B. So now you could go farther distances to find work and be able to bring back money to your family. It's the same thing as like a car here in the US, right? For me, when I was living in Queens, I was just doing public transportation. Once I got to become a, a developer, I was able to buy my own car and be able to travel and go outside of New York. Now I'm working at Long Island. From there, from Long Island, I'm able to say, you know what? Now I want to move to Connecticut. Now if I want to say, hey, I want to move to uh, Massachusetts and I want to work in Hartford, I can do that because I have those opportunities, right? And little things like that is what gives your life meaning and, and, and more comfortable for yourself and just learning to code it just changes your life you know you go from one thing to another it's like baby steps it's like if you don't know anything and, and you never walked like you got to go one step at a time you know it's like me my first two years what i did was i came in i started saving money i started cleaning up my credit say you know paying off everything that i used to owe from before you know and it took like on my third year then now i was above water so everything that was coming in, it wasn't bag, me like... paying debt, paying credit cards or paying anything. It was just saving it to the bank account. Now I'm doing passive income. Whatever I'm working, whatever I'm getting from my job, everything that's passive income, now I get to save it straight to the bank. 
And that's how you start building wealth. And then now you have those opportunities. There's people that come in and say, man, you know, you could go in into drop shipping and, and this, this and that. But if you don't have money to advertise, you can't get into that game. You get what I'm saying? It's like somebody who, who says, man, you should open up a business. You should open up a store. This person doesn't have $20 in his pocket. He can't open up a, a shop and say, hey, I got $8,000 to open up a store. You know, you don't have those opportunities. So you have to build yourself up little by little. And to me, learning how to code, it just opens the doors for you. It just completely opens the doors because there's good income coming in. And then now you can set yourself up for success, you know, so. No, absolutely. And you got to be willing to hustle. You know what I mean? Like I said in, at the top of the show, like, dude, I was going into local businesses. Knock, knock, knock. Yo, I'm selling websites. $500. Oh, you don't have 500 How about 200 Oh, you don't have 200 How about 100 Bro, mm -hmm. I built websites for $100, bro, when I was first getting started. Give me $50 now, and I'll come back next week when the website's done, and I'll give you another 50 mm -hmm. That's how real it was. But you know. I knew I could bang out that website in two hours. I wouldn't come back in two hours because I'm not going to show him it took two hours. I'm going to pretend it took a week so he could feel happy. So I'll be like, all right, cool. Give me $50 now. I got you. I'm going to come back. Boom. I'll go home. I knock the website out. I'll be like, all right, I'm going to go back. Uh, today's Tuesday. Da -da -da. All right, I'm going to go back on, on, on Saturday. Make it look like it took long. Yo, here you go. Yo, it's done. Let me get the other 50. Literally. Mm -hmm. Literally. Because I was hungry. I wanted to. But it's a skill that it allows you to do that. It allows you to create. And now, dude, I built websites for 50000 for mm -hmm. one website. $50,000. But why is that? It was because I built all the $50 websites, $100 websites, $500 websites. And now I have that experience. And I stand on top of that. You know what I mean? And people don't know how to stand on top of their experience. I was mm -hmm. telling these kids in Puerto Rico. Um, I, I work with the University of Arecibo. Oh, so real quick, plug, 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 plug myself. Mm -hmm. so yeah, we, throw, yeah. we throw these huge events out in Puerto Rico. Um, it's called Disrupt Puerto Rico, and uh, the last one we did was called Disrupt Yourself. And we fly in all these influencers from all around the world, they all come to Puerto Rico, and then we sell tickets to people from the states, but then we give away free tickets to the kids from the university. Mm -hmm. So I have these kids from the university that I mentor, and they were in my house the other day. And I was telling them, I was like, Yo, it doesn't matter how much you're getting paid, well, your experience is how you, you get paid, how much heart and soul you put into it is how you get paid. It's not how much they're paying you. You're going to spend the money. But are you going to be able to go to the next job and say, yo, I did a great job. I made them a million dollars. That's why you should hire me is because I get results. That's your real payment because that goes into yourself. And then you stand on the on the experience. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? I wasn't able to get a $1,000 website until I built a couple of $500 websites. I wasn't mm -hmm. able to get a $10,000 client until I did a couple of $1,000 clients. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And I got my experience and I got, and I had results to show, you mm -hmm. know? And I feel like people nowadays, they're so privileged. Like you was mentioning, they see, oh, you get a hundred thousand as soon as you come out of the coding boot camp. Like, no, I'm sorry. It doesn't work like that. You got to pay your dues, you know? And if people were willing to pay their dues, they would get so much, so much farther, you know? I could have mm -hmm. been fancy. I could have said, yo, I'm not moving to Puerto Rico until mm -hmm. I got the condo that I want. I'm, I'm not going to move. I'm going to wait. I'll probably still be in New York right now. Yeah, but I yeah, said, no, I don't care. I'm going to go on Craigslist. Whatever crackhead apartment I, I'm going to get for the first month is only the first month. Mm -hmm. And I went and I rented it. And then when I was in that place, I looked for the next place. Went mm -hmm. into that place. Didn't really like it, but it was an upgrade. Boom, boom, yeah. boom, boom, boom. Now I found the place where I'm at now. You know what I mean? So it's steps. It's levels. And it doesn't take forever. I haven't even been here a year yet since mm -hmm. I took that first step and I was living in the freaking shack. It's, it hasn't even been a year and I leveled myself up. Boop, 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 boop. But yeah. people are scared. They're scared to jump, you know? Yeah, no. Hey, I was going to ask you, so Disrupt, what exactly is Disrupt? What exactly is it that you guys do? Because I see you all the time on, on Instagram. I know you have the meetings, but how... You know, like, give me like a rundown. What is it that you do exactly right now in PR? All right, so so we we have two parts of the company. First and foremost, um, one of them's a for profit, and then one of them's a non profit. Uh, so we have the Disrupt Foundation, and we do a lot of stuff through the foundation, and then we have uh, Disrupt Digital, which is like my media company. And but both of those companies have the same mission. So mm. 
as an organization, we exist to empower the next generation of developers, thought leaders, creators, and entrepreneurs to learn new skills, grow their careers, chase their passions, and create financial freedom. So that's our mission. Mm -hmm. Now, we do that in a couple of different ways. So we do that through our marketing agency. So if people want a website to get built, they want an app to get built, they want a video content, social media content, any type of digital skill is not only coding. We do do apps, though. But any type of digital skill that people need, they can come and hire us. And then we hire local people here in Puerto Rico to do the job. And oh, that's hot. we have people with experience that oversee them. I oversee all the jobs and make sure they get done correctly. But if you need a Shopify store built, you need an app built, we do that. We do work for hire. So that's our for-profit um, business. Mm -hmm. Then Definitely. we have uh, our nonprofit, the Disrupt Foundation. Um, and in the foundation, we have uh, two, two things that we do. Um, so we do events. We do like in-person experiences. Uh, we do boot camps and workshops. And then we do, um, we have a, a project that we're working on called Disrupt University, uh, which hasn't uh, formally launched yet. We have a few people in it that's beta um, where, where we teach people skills. Um, but my vision for Puerto Rico is, I uh, and shout out to Summer. She's a very talented um, architect. She actually designed the school. Um, my vision for Puerto Rico is a school, a physical location called the Disrupt University. All solar panels on top, green, renewable. God forbid the power grid ever went down, this building would be uh, reliable. And it's a university mixed with a startup ecosystem. So it's like almost like a WeWork mixed with like a general assembly. Mm. And it'll be a place where people can learn to code. It'll be a place where people can uh, learn marketing, learn uh, videography, learn all these digital skills for the new economy. Right mm -hmm. now, the educational system is broken. I'm mm -hmm. sorry. I went to college and I dropped out. I listened to Cameron back then. Cameron said, I'm going to go to college for four years, get out, get paid 30000 How the fuck am I supposed to go to Miami five times a year doing that dumb shit? Yeah. Right? <laughs> and, and it's the truth. You know what I mean? We've been sold a lie. They, they Like the whole college. I, I got a friend of mine. She went to school to be a, a lawyer. She got out. She was being a lawyer for one year. She's $200,000 in debt, and she hates being a lawyer. But now she is stuck being a lawyer so she could try to pay off that debt. And I got news for you. You think a lawyer makes a lot of money? Not the first year. You make it 50000 mama. Uh -huh. 50000 if you're lucky, maybe sixty. You know? So we've been sold a lie. We've been sold a really, really big lie. Our educational system is freaking broken. So the shrub is on a mission to fix that. So right now what we're doing is what we call augmented education. So we're not going in and saying we're the university. We're not there yet, but we're going in and we're augmenting it. So we go and we do workshops in the universities here. We go and do events with the kids, with the communities. We just spoke at a high school recently. like, And we go and we add something. So it's like, okay, your education system is here. It's great. I don't want to take it down, especially not in Puerto Rico. It's really needed. Mm -hmm. But how can we add something on top of it? How can we add some flavor? How can we go in and do a coding workshop? How can we go in and do a blockchain workshop? Right. And actually add something to the existing educational system. So, yeah, we're working right now with uh, Microsoft and the secretary of education for the whole island of Puerto Rico. And we're working to add additional workshops into the uh, into the education system down here. That's hot, man. You know, sign me up for whatever you guys need. Sign me up, you know, because I'm like, that's pretty much what I want to do here, man. Uh, uh, right now, I have in here in this coding phase headquarters i have a couple of junior high schools that want me to bring in bring in kids and you know i'll tutor them like just give them like you know once or twice a week you know from five o'clock to six thirty teach them something new and you know not making any money no nothing not even donations but just like just to help people out man and if you're already on the process like you're already working with schools out there like man you you so much ahead of, of like that's pretty much what i want to do so you're like so much ahead of where i'm at right now out here in, in connecticut well, so that's sure. that's, that's together, pretty cool man, man. that's what I, it's about man we're gonna gather making an impact yeah man that's so freaking cool i'm like i'm blown away right now i'm like damn it's crazy you you're freaking doing the what i want to do here you're doing it in puerto rico and like that's so hot because it's like you you're seeing an opportunity and at the same time you just went for it you know like this times where like i was telling you earlier like i wanted to go to dr and sort of do the same thing over there but it, it's so corrupt in dr so i said i'm gonna take a hold right now until i, I could do it properly but 
like it, it's crazy like you could just go down there and do what you have to do and like that's you know that's so much respect for me man you know thank, and, thank you and it really it really helps out because like there's kids that and people that you're working with that you don't even know how much you're affecting them and and helping them so much that a year two years from now you're gonna see the fruits of that you know what i mean the kid that just came in and he was like a little bit nervous he didn't know if he wants to get into it now he becomes a developer comes in works at a company and comes back and helps his whole family you know and that's just how it is like people don't see that's the real trickle down effect you know when people talk about oh no if you know you have the rich people and the rich people will hire the poor people no 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 if you help the people at the bottom that trickles down to the community and to everybody else that idea that's like oh if you're rich you just you give them jobs and it's like nah the guy that's on top he just want to make as much profit as possible and and exploit whoever's down here no I, dude i know rich people they don't want to even hire people no more yeah the rich people i know they're like how can we get automation how do we oh, get yeah, a yeah, yeah. no of course how do we yeah. get a robot to do this like straight up like i talk to a lot of these dudes they're like i don't want to hire no one i just want to create a company that works with robots like whatever i'll hire the one guy that knows how to make robots and that's it and yeah. i don't want to hire nobody else like they don't want to create jobs that's bullshit. like you said they want to keep yeah. all the money for them yeah no because it's like we live in this culture where uh let's say right now you say okay all i want to do is get a car then you get a car then you say all i want to do is get a house now you got a house but then once you get that house you're like wait there's somebody out there that has a 10 million dollar house okay now i want to get the 10 million dollar house and then now you get that 10 million dollar house now you want a hundred million dollar house so it just continues growing and the only way for you to continue to grow is to cut down on whoever works for you and just say okay how can we maximize this thing you know it's like some like let's say like walmart people that work at, at walmart they'll be like oh i can't do over 20 hours a week because then they they have to pay you the um benefits so what walmart does is like okay they'll hire you at this walmart for 20 hours and then they'll hire you at another walmart for 20 hours just to not give you the the benefits or or anything of like oh we don't gotta pay for healthcare and that's just to maximize the profit for them you know what I mean it's like the same thing what happened when like 2008 and the banks and everything everybody got paid off right but they're the ones that messed up the whole system but they got paid off but everybody that got fired from the bottom nobody got any check coming in you know what I mean like whole economy is down where's my check you know what I mean? Uh, I lost the house. What's my check? I, I lost my business. What's my check? Nah, the ones on the top get to keep the most of it. So it's like, that's the world that we live in. And, and it's crazy. That's why I tell people, you got to you gotta start thinking about, you know, try to help each other out, man. It, it's so important to help people out and just leave an impact. Because every all the things you could try to accumulate everything. And at the end of the day, when you die, you die. That's it. Nobody cares if you bought... 500 lamborghinis you know what i mean now if you help 500 families those people will continue to tell your story forever so you become immortal by that because now those families be like man there was this guy who gave us jobs and now i'm able to feed my family and your great grandfather used to work for this guy so now you're like generations and generations you know people are grateful to what you did you know what i mean like that's how I look at it. I'm like, yo, I'm just trying to be immortal out here. Like the day I die, I want people to remember me for something. Not just to say, man, this guy, he, he, he was here for one generation. We don't know who the hell he is. The next one, you know, you want to leave a legacy and the best way is to really help out each other and just, you know, just constantly just bring people from the bottom, bring them to the next stage. You know, it's like, I, I come here. The main reason I do all this YouTube thing is if there's a kid that's getting, $14 at UPS and I'm able to get him to $25, $30 an hour. Hey man, I just helped him out to get to the next level, next class, you know, cause all of this, I, I look at it as different classes. If you from $0 to $20,000, you're one class, 20,000 to 50. That's another class, 50,000 to 70,000. That's another class, 70,000 to a hundred thousand. That's another class. If I can continue to grow you, into the next step in, in in the whole class system i did my job because now that is going to reflect to your kids and their kids if, if you do the right thing you know so
Definitely, man. But yo, Anthony, I think we're gonna uh we're gonna put a hold right here. I think we've been here for what like an hour, 40 minutes. Yeah, it's yeah. It's been a pleasure, man. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank you again for having me on the show, brother. I appreciate it. I appreciate your time. And yeah, keep doing what you're doing, man. It's it's, it's definitely a great look, man. You're you're inspiring a lot of people out there. Yeah, definitely, man. Anthony, I'm I'm gonna stay in contact with you. So like that, we could link up. Like I I could take a trip over there and call it a business business trip. Put it's a that business right. Trip. Business we'll trip. We'll hey. do a podcast on my show. I gotta get you on my show. We do a yeah. podcast out here. <laughs> yeah, man. Take like you know, take like three, four days out there. Like I I never been to PR, so I've been dying. You know, it's like. I, I've been with so many Puerto Rican women. I might as well be Puerto Rican <laughs> out here. You know what I mean? But it's like, it's time to go back to the motherland now. You know, uh -huh. so I, know that's I definitely right. got to go out there for so sure, I'm, man. I'm literally leaving to New York tonight. Oh, yeah? Yeah, so I'm going to be in New York. I'm taking a red eye, and I'll be there tomorrow morning. And I'm going to see Eric Thomas, E.T., the hip-hop preacher. Uh, he's uh, doing an event with, with in collaboration with Forbes. Um, that's another thing about me. I'm, I'm a contributor for Forbes Tech Council. Uh, look my article up, uh, why I moved to Puerto Rico and why Puerto Rico is perfect for digital nomads. Um, and and then the next day, there's there's an event at uh, at Ty Lopez. It's like a private event. So, yeah, so I'm going to be in New York City. Maybe we can link up while, while I'm out yeah. there. And then, dude, whenever you want to come to Puerto Rico, let me know. I got your back. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, let me know. Send me an email uh, the exact dates and like what what would be like a time frame where you could be free because I know you gotta be moving around and this, this, and that. Then I could just probably drive back to New York and and go meet you over there so that that we could really build a relationship. Because oh, yeah. I'm telling you right now, I'm, I'm gonna go to PR. Like so, when I'm there, it's like, yo, bro, we in the block. Get okay, what the rock? We in here, you know. <laughs> <laughs> nah, you, Yo, you're word. sure bro i can't wait to get you out here <laughs> now we gotta get we gotta get some of them coding phases courses down here to the kids man yeah yeah man look listen that's another thing too whatever uh i can help out you know we do freaking some coupon codes some free coupon codes where it just right. gives everybody access you know um whatever you you know for the kids that's out there however i could contribute yeah hey man you got the the websites open access to whoever whoever needs it out there because i know that was another thing that i wanted to to get into i wanted to find like the right right way to do it to basically give free access to like really low income link low income kids who who want to get into this so it's like you don't have that barrier you know it's like man because i know how it is when i wanted to to do something and then now you ask your mom's like mom let me get ten dollars let me use your credit card and your mom's like i don't know about that kid you know it's like <laughs> hey man let's let's help the kids out you know so definitely let's do it man for sure but yeah man you already know guys it's your boy joe back at it again codingphase.com your boy is back and i done did it again Dab. <laughs> All right.